County Fair. Fair Talk is brought to you by Tim's Trucking, Rice County Mutual, Monte Cruzi Electric, Tom's Lock and Key, Keller Insurance Agency, Dr. David Garley, State Bank of Fairbo, Fairbo Foods, and the IBEW Local Union 110. Now here's your host, Jerry Grosskreutz. Oh boy, it's time for another Fair Talk 2017. John Dvorak is in studio. John, I just did the math. 12 days and counting. Yep, 12 days and counting. And uh, uh, You're looking very relaxed, although I, you know, I drive by the <laughs> fairgrounds going home every day, back and forth, and every day I can see more changes, uh, this coming out, that getting moved into place, a banner going up. Each day stuff is happening. That's right. Each day stuff is happening, and uh, 12 days to the fair and 17 days, and it's over with. So <laughs> <laughs> We are... <laughs> The most depressing thing is that Monday morning after the fair, going and tearing things down, the yeah. carnival's all gone, and yeah. uh, everything was so full of life, and all at once, kaboom, it's all harvested and gone, as you like to say. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, But, uh, no, things are coming along good. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of rain, so that's greened up the grass again, and... Uh, you know, the county's out there cutting it every week, and my maintenance crew is out there, you know, uh, running the weed whip and, and starting now to really get things uh, set up. You know, all the gates are set up in the barns and uh, uh, doing last-minute touches. I know last week we uh, installed, uh, we're going to put in new flagpole, something I'm really inter- uh, excited about. Uh, the American Legion donated uh, flagpoles to us. And uh, so we're going to have the American flag along with the Minnesota flag and the POW flag. So uh, we moved them kind of in the uh, area that the gazebo is. So uh, now we have the flags, you know, they'll be out in the open. And so something that uh, I've always been wanting to do because, you know, we've had a flag there and it's kind of in the center of the tucked away in in the center of the fairgrounds. And so this way they'll be out in the open for everybody to see when they first come in. So. Something that I'm looking forward to and excited about. How are we doing with getting all the different types of volunteers and part-time employees that are at the gate, you know, taking uh, the parking fees, some of those kinds of things? Stephen did that a couple of summers and really enjoyed it. Yeah, we uh, anybody, if there's any groups out there that uh, would like to uh, raise some money for a fundraiser for, you know, a, a trip that might be coming up for a group, individuals or uh you know if any other groups are out there uh, we are looking for people to uh help park cars uh you know once the cars come into the gate we need people to uh kind of direct traffic where they need to park and you know if there's a group out there that'd be interested in that uh get a hold of me we would gladly uh try to schedule you in uh, you know, we don't need you. F- we need you, but uh, not, f- you know, if you can't do the whole fair and can only do a couple of days, you know, we'll take the help any way we can get it. Uh, we can always use uh, ticket takers and people to sell tickets. And uh, so there's always a need for to, for volunteers. And, uh, you know, if you're shy about it and you want to talk to somebody, uh, you give me a call at the office and, uh, you know, I'll gladly help you out and, and uh you know, tell you what it's explained, what it's all about, and hopefully we can get a few volunteers to come in and and uh, help us out at the fair. Oh, what a great opportunity. Kevin Eastrom with the Rice County Pork Producers Food Stand, the same thing. You know, people come in and work, and then he makes a contribution to whatever fundraiser it is that they're working on, so you can help yourself a little bit. That's exactly right, and... Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of people to put the fair on, and, and we can use all the volunteers that that we can get. Uh, I encourage people to to come on out and, and, and help. It's a, it's a fun time, and, and uh, you have a lot of fun doing it. And it's, not and it's an that, excuse to spend some time at the fair. That's exactly right. That's <laughs> fair exactly food. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, like I said, uh, if you can't do it every day of the fair, you know, we'll – take the help any way we can get it stop down to the fair office because we know the real fair manager chris is in the office there four days a week now or is it five days a week yeah, she's in the office where the, the office is open four days a week now uh, we usually take friday off uh the week before the fair i'll probably be there and uh, i'm usually in the office to all five days of the week sometimes on saturday too so um you know, if, if if you can't find nobody there, call and leave us a message, and uh, we'll or get send back an to you. email, maybe. That's right, or send an email. So, uh, one way or another, we'll get back to you. We have to take a break for the markets here in about fifteen seconds. Wanted to mention special guest after the market break, Mighty Barnes with 
the rodeo that's is going right. to join us. Big rodeo coming to the Rice County Fair. That's Wednesday night, was it? Friday, Friday night. night at the Rice County Fair. Welcome back to today's AM Minnesota program, Fair Talk 2017. John Dvorak is in studio. And John, being as how you did all the work and organized everything, I will let you introduce our special guest. Well, today on the radio show with us, we have Marty Barnes from uh, Barnes Rodeo. And good morning, Marty. Well, good morning, John. How are things now? And are you uh, all set to come up to Rice County? Yes, sir. We're excited about it, and, and a lot of cowboys are talking about it, too, because it's a new stop, a new place to go, and so I'm just hoping it fits in everybody's schedule to get there as far as contestants go and spectators. Uh, Marty, could you explain to me PCRA? What does that stand for? Because I don't know a whole lot about rodeos. <laughs> well, sure. No no problem at all. It's P-R-C-A, oh. Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. And in the world of rodeo, that's the same level as the NFL, and everybody knows what the NFL is. But if you don't, well, then the NBA or the NHL. In the sport of rodeo, that the the PRCA is the top as far as governing, sanctioning body for the world of rodeo. All the other standards from all the other minor league associations are set uh, with the PRCA as a, as a guideline, I guess. So then, these cowboys will actually be competing, and how they do? They get points for an overall championship or something at the end of the season. That's how it works, Marty. Yes, sir. The cowboys that will compete at Fairbow at the Rice County Fair will be uh, competing for points that will qualify them for the Great Lakes Circuit Finals in Louisville, Kentucky, in November, and they'll also be qualify. Or, excuse me, using uh, earning points that qualify them for World Standings. For the national finals rodeo in las vegas uh 10 days in december boy so they're going to be going all out to to put on a show because uh, they want to get to las vegas and in december yes sir because the points that count at your rodeo they're, they're double points you might say they count for world points and they count for circuit points and they want to use us use them as circuit points to get to uh, louisville kentucky in november because in the money they win there it's on the top 12 in each region can go there those count for world points and then from there, the top two qualify for the National Circuit Finals in Kissimmee, Florida in April, and those also count for world points. So you, you, you guys, is really very important to, to some of these guys as a stepping stone to get to Louisville, to get to Kissimmee, to also get to Las Vegas. Well, this is kind of like uh, the NASCAR fans or the racing, the drivers, how they do at each race, its overall points for the season. So this is set up the same way as uh, the, the racing circuit, too, then? Yes, sir, it's similar. Yes, sir, it is. This sounds like a big-time rodeo, John. How did you pull this off to get Marty and, and Barnes to come to the Rice County Fair? And it's Friday night at the fair, right? Yes, Friday night. Uh, starts at 7 o'clock, uh, Friday, July 21st. Uh, so uh, this kind of was not something that happened overnight. Uh, I guess, Marty, if you remember, Marty contacted me, and we had a meeting uh, this happened two years ago that we had a meeting, and, and Marty called me up and said, John, I'd, I'd really be interested in coming to the Rice County Fair. He says, you have a beautiful fairgrounds there, and I think it'd be a perfect place for us to have a rodeo. So uh, it took us a little bit of uh, working and, and trying to get things worked out, and uh, uh, finally we made it happen. And uh, last January at the convention, Marty was there, and uh, we signed a contract for uh, Marty to come up and perform at the Rice County Fair this summer. Marty, tell us a little bit about the Barnes Rodeo, like the fourth generation, ready? So this is a family business. Yes, sir. My dad started in 1950. Uh, he served in Korea in the Marines, and his sister and himself uh, grew up breaking horses for local farmers to ride and to drive. And from there, they thought they'd earn a little extra money, and went to a rodeo, and they kind of caught the bug. And then he got hurt in Korea, and from there he decided, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to own the bucking horses instead of getting on them. Uh, a little more guaranteed contract, and so he did. He started that, and, and from there it's really, really grown. Um, in fact, I just got to Spooner, Wisconsin last night at midnight. We have rodeo starts tonight. This is our 64th year in a row being here in Spooner. Uh, we've been to Buffalo, Minnesota for 60 years, the Minnesota State Fair for over 40. Um, and so I guess without being arrogant, we have a product that the people want to see year after year. And that's also what helped us come to the, to the Rice County Fair is Dale Bowenfine, who's from around there, was the chairman of the rodeo at the Minnesota Horse Expo that was always held in April. And we had a rodeo there, or we still do, 
for we've had it for quite a number of years and Dale was the chairman and he said, You know the Rice County Fair, you ever been there? And I said, No, sir. And I met him there for breakfast one day and we just went and drove around. I said, Yes, sir, that'd be perfect. And like John said, from there, you know, just went forward. Well, we've had bull riding at the Rice County Fair in the past, but a rodeo was a whole lot more than bull riding, right, Marty? Yes, sir. Uh, the rodeo there will have seven events, the, the six standard PRCA events of bareback, saddle brock, bull riding. Those are judged events, uh, three timed events or tie-down roping, steer wrestling, team roping, and they will also have the women's barrel racing, which is sanctioned by the WPRA, Women's Professional Rodeo Association. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all, you have all those events, plus we'll have a, a clown, specialty act. There'll be something for everybody. You know, if you want to see the skill of a horseman in the timed event, you want to see the danger in the action of a rough stock event, or the comedy of the clowns that we'll have. There'll be a little something for everybody. And there's an announcer that's explaining and educating kind of what's going on and how the Cowboys are judged and, and that sort of thing, too. Right, Marty? Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, our announcer there, his name is Kelly Kinney. And he's announcing here at Spooner, Wisconsin. And just over the 4th of July, July 1, 2, 3, 4, um, I was selected to be the arena director in Molala, Oregon. And lo and behold, there's Kelly Kinney announcing it also. So he's got some good credentials as far as being well-known throughout the whole United States. Uh, and he's, uh, I'm lucky enough, fortunate enough that he's free on Friday night. And so he'll be there as your announcer. Boy, we're looking forward to that, Marty. Uh, you know, uh, this is a new event uh, that come to. We've had uh, years back. We've had uh, rodeos, but it's it's never been at this level. So, uh, you know, we're really excited here to have you. And uh, you know, I encourage the people, you know, to come on out and enjoy the rodeo because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, sir. It'll be something that if they've seen some, an activity like this there before. You know, rodeos spell the same, but so is football, and so is baseball. And there's double-A and single-A and triple-A baseball, and there's major league. And so they're going to be coming, they're going to see major league rodeo, um, covered grandstand, great seating, really, really nice fairgrounds. And so, you know, there's no way to go wrong. Boy, we've got some professional performers, but what about, Marty, taking care of all the animals? These sound like they're well-trained animals, too, whether it's a bull or a, a horse that's that knows how to try and get John off its back when it does, he doesn't want John on his back anymore, right? Right. <laughs> and, and all the horses and bulls that are there we've raised, they're born to buck. And, and like like you said, on the fourth generation of Barnes Rodeo, my dad started it, and when he passed away, I took over. My son is old and he's old enough now that, that he's my right-hand man, and now he has a little daughter and little boy. So the fourth generation is on the ground, but the, the horses and bulls, yes, sir, we've raised them, and there's some horses that are here third and fourth generation raised at the ranch um and you know they we take care of them in the morning in fact we uh, started feeding this morning at seven thirty. we got done about a quarter to nine so now the crew can go to breakfast you know the animals always eat first and at night the same thing we take care of them at night first before we go take care of ourselves <clears throat> excuse me but uh i'm sorry there's a little noise here from the all the machines going on um but there's horses and, and bulls there that have been to the Great Lakes Circuit Finals in Louisville, Kentucky. And there'll be horses and bulls there that have been to the National Finals Road in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, one thing, I guess you said, was trained. Now, these horses and bulls aren't trained. We just manage them like a, like a manager manages a baseball pitcher, whether he bucks them or whether he pitches every day or once every three days or twice a week. That's what we can do with these horses and bulls. We get to know them by watching them. And we can find out if it's better to buck them once every two weeks or maybe buck them on a Friday and then again on a Sunday because each animal is different. Um, as far as training goes, the only trained animals would be the ones that the timed event cowboys use because, like, for instance, you'll rope a calf, dismount from your horse, run down and tie the calf. So the horse then is standing by himself. You know, so he needs to be trained on what to do there. Um, but, yeah, we, we just manage these animals um, I guess they're trained in the, in the respect of being letting us humans deal with them. You know, they're not wild. They're domesticated, but not friendly is what I like to say sometimes. Well, I remember a few years ago I was channel surfing, and I saw some rodeo, and it was in Las Vegas, and it was the professionals. This is what we're going to have right here at the Rice County Fair. That's yes, right. Sir. And we're, Yeah, it's, it's going to happen, and we're excited about it, and... Uh, you know, it's something that uh, I've 
thought of uh, for a long time is to get a professional rodeo here. And so uh, I, I was so happy when, when Marty contacted me. I didn't go looking for Marty. Marty contacted me. And, and I thought that was a, a good, great thing for the Rice County Fair for somebody of Marty's statue to come and say, hey, you have a beautiful fairgrounds. We want to come to Rice County. Uh, that goes. That says a lot about what we are accomplishing here at the Rice County Fair. And thanks to some sponsors that helped make it happen too, right? That's exactly right. You know, without the sponsors that we have, uh, you know, it would be hard to, to put this event on. And, um, you know, I'm thankful to the uh, State Bank of Faribault. Uh, they were the ones that really made this event happen and, and it made it possible. So my hat's off to them. And, Matt, I appreciate everything you've done to help me. Uh, you know, you've been a great help, and, and we appreciate it. And, and hopefully, you know, it's a show that the people in Rice County can come out and enjoy and, <coughs> and um, you know, we can go on from year to year and have this. We can, take, we can take a trip to Las Vegas to see a great professional rodeo <laughs> at the Rice County Fair, and we don't have the airfare of the hotels, right, Marty? <laughs> That's right. That's right, and- and you know these contestants that come in, they'll be buying gas or diesel. They're going to a restaurant and eat. Some of the guys will stay overnight and spend some money at the motel. Or if they're traveling, they need something, they'll, they'll you know travel to the discount store and buy a towel or some soap. You don't know where, where all their money is going to go. So it does really yeah. affect the mm-hmm. local communities when they have an event like this, not just ticket sales. And so hopefully all these people, as they say, will get over-deposited at the bank. When the half the rodeo leaves town, and, and just just so you know, Marty, we have a really good uh, ambulance crews here in Faribault, and a very good hospital too for anybody <laughs> the cowboys that get, or cowgirls <laughs> that get hurt. <laughs> but it, that really doesn't happen too often, does it? They're they're professionals. If they do get thrown off, they kind of know how to hit and land and and how to deal with this. Yes, sir. It, you know, just like any sport, these guys are athletes. One thing that's that's 180 degrees different with rodeos and other sports is these guys aren't on a salary they're not on a team they don't have a trainer a personal doctor physician anything like that they're all as i say independent contractors they come and go on their own so uh, in fact out there in, in molala oregon there's a couple guys riding had a had a broken arm they had their cast but they are still competing using the other hand because if you don't compete you don't have a chance to win and sitting home healing not going to give you a chance to heal. So there's a lot of injuries that rodeo cowboys just fight through and just keep competing. Um, you know, it's not like a broken ankle to a running back. He's, he's done. A broken ankle to a, let's say, a bull rider, he can still compete. They'll tape it up. They'll put a spur on it, on the cast if they have such thing, and they'll keep, keep competing if they can. That's uh, motivation. Same thing with the animals. Uh, if the animals are injured, they go home. Uh, there's always a veterinarian on site. That's one of the PRCA rules. Or the PRCA is a leader as far as animal welfare goes in the sport of rodeo. Um, in fact, we've got a bull here in Spooner, Wisconsin, that a year ago in May, he injured himself um, out in the other pen uh, with bulls. They got to fight, and then he got injured. And we, we fed him for a full year before we bucked him again. We wanted to make sure he was healed up and everything was sound and structured and everything was great. And he's one of our top two or three bulls going on the herd right now. So it was, it was worth the effort we made just to feed him for a whole year, even though he wasn't doing anything to earn his keep, you might say. Uh, but that's how we like to take care of the animals. You know, they, they work for us, so we're sure going to take care of them. Well, Marty, uh, just one question. So uh, <clears throat> when the cowboy comes up or the bull rider comes up, he doesn't get to pick his bull. Do they draw a number, or how does that work? You know, how do they get assigned the bull that they – or the horse that they're going to be uh, competing on. Yes, sir, John. The the Cowboys uh, that are members of the PRCA, they get a magazine called the Pro Rodeo Sports News. And in that it lists all the rodeos across the whole United States, Canada, and now even Mexico. There's a PRCA rodeos in Mexico. And so they look at that, and they look at their map on their travel plans of where they can go and all that. And so then they call into ProCom, an 800 number, and say, I would like to enter Fairboat, Minnesota or I would like to enter Nogales, Texas, or something like that, the computer then puts them in their event, and they're going to compete. And then they call me. The the professional cowboy station calls me and says, hey, we need 10 bulls and 11 bareback riders and 12 saddlebrock horses for Fairboat, Minnesota, on July 21st. I'll look at my list of animals and say, okay, here's some animals that are fresh. I'm going to bring these to Fairboat. I give them the numbers, and they randomly draw a number for a cowboy in each event, just like playing bingo or the lottery. <laughs> <clears throat> well, 
Well, we sure are looking forward to, to you coming to Fairville, Minnesota, Marty, and putting on a great show for us. Well, I appreciate it, and we're sure excited to be there. We're, we're excited to have you too, Marty, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping now – uh, in our conversation we had, so we've talked about, uh, you know, that rodeo goes rain or shine. And, and uh, so, you know, uh, anybody that buys a presale ticket, we do have presale tickets. We can get them online. We have them at several stores around here in Faribault. Uh, people can be rest assured that uh, there's going to be a show that night. Cool. Yes, sir. Because, like I said, because these guys are not on a team, they're not guaranteed anything. And they pay their own expenses to get there, whether they're going to fly in from somewhere or drive in from somewhere. There might be three or four guys in, jammed in a minivan or two or three cowboys and a horse trailer show up together. But they pay their own expenses there. So when they enter, they need to have the opportunity to compete. And watching a rodeo in the rain, it's pretty good watching. You know, I mean, it's like football in the snow. You'll see some good wrecks. And, uh, but the horses can take care of themselves as far as the footing goes, you know. Well, Marty, uh, we've got to take a break here. We'll look forward to seeing you in Fairbow on July 21st. Travel safe in the meantime. Thank you, sir. Look forward to it. Thank you, Marty. We'll be in touch. Thank, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. And we have to take a quick break, and then we'll wrap up today's AM Minnesota program. Welcome back to today's AM Minnesota pro- program, Fair Talk 2017. John, it was really fun to visit with Marty Third and fourth generation professional rodeo coming to Faribault. Wow. It, it sure was. It was a great uh, uh, conversation we had with Marty, and and uh, you know I'm, I'm really like I said I'm really looking forward to this rodeo, and uh, you know this is like you said this is the top of the top. I mean for rodeos, and uh, you know if we have uh, rodeo buffs here around Rice County and around this area, you know I encourage you to come on out because uh, I think they're going to put on a great show. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since we've had an event like this coming to the fair. And, uh, you know, let's come on out and support it and make it something that we can happen every year. Are tickets uh, already advanced sale? Tickets are on sale. Uh, they, we have advanced tickets available. Uh, we have advanced tickets at the State Bank of Faribault, at uh, Ace Hardware, Fairway Foods, and we also have tickets available at Faribault High V. And we're also selling tickets online. At uh, you can go to uh, ricecountyfair.net and there's a, a spot where you can go and click on to get tickets to the rodeo. So because Tara's doing her job on the that's website. exactly right. So <laughs> you know the, there's there's plenty of ways to uh, they're thirteen dollars for presale tickets. Otherwise at the gate they're fifteen dollars. But if you decide the last minute, come on over and you can right. just pick up a ticket right at the gate and see a professional show. That's right. And also at the gate, you know we're going to ha- offer a family pack, so that's two adult tickets and uh, four children tickets and that'll be forty dollars oh good so a whole family can go very reasonable that's exactly right so you know come on out it's going to be a great time uh you know let's support the rodeo and, and, and rice county fair at the same time and uh it'll be a night of, of a lot of fun thanks john we'll look forward to visiting again next week thank you much john devork the fair manager at the rice county fair